Welcome back to Lemon Lane Cottage. Today we are all about the veggie garden. I have an area in the back of our yard um, which we have turned into my very own urban homestead. Something that I've always wanted. It is something that we have dreamed about, talking, talked about moving to a place um, with more space to have some animals. It just never worked out. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna bring that to wherever you're at. That's what we've done. I cannot wait to share with you. The project behind me has only been going on for a year and a half. We actually got the chickens in June of 2020. We got the rabbits in February 2020. And so the coop and the rabbit hutches, that's all relatively new. The area that I've planted um, with my veggie patch is relatively new and I have done everything on a very, very tight budget. In fact, most of what I have built has been just scraps of wood that my husband has had. He, um, you will see there's a couple of really nice beds in here, those he built and he is much more skilled at it than I am. I use an old fashioned handsaw and a hammer. So you will notice the difference, but I've tried to, to kind of unify it in color and the green green vegetables and and flowers and the chickens and the rabbits they all make it beautiful so i love it i hope that in this video you are encouraged no matter where you are we are on about a fifth of an acre i think is what we have measured it out to be but even if you're on um, a postage size lot which is really all that i'm working on here you can achieve something like this if it's what interests you if the idea of providing some of the vegetables and the eggs or whatever your city town um, restrictions will allow um, providing some of that for your family uh, is appealing to you give it a try you're only out you know a couple of six packs of starts from Lowe's or Home Depot or your garden center or a packet of seeds if you still have time um, to do that this year. So with that, I am so thankful that you're here. I hope that you'll subscribe. Every, we every weekend, each month, I will bring you a different section of the garden as a complete tour and you can see month to month how it progresses. I also, through the week, will throw in videos on whatever I'm doing and that could include the garden, it could include the kitchen, um, it could include even some entertaining whatever happens to be going on um, relating to the cottage that week. So, quick chit chat today because we have a pretty long video. I hope that uh, you enjoy it. I hope that it inspires you and please ask me any questions that you have in the comments. I am happy to, to answer what I know. So, that's it. Let's go ahead and get started with this tour. And as always, thanks for stopping by. So welcome to our urban homestead. I am so excited to share this with you. We've only been working on this space for a couple of years now, and it is really amazing what you can fit into a small area, how much food you can actually grow, how many animals you can safely and happily keep, and also just how much fun it is to be doing this here in the middle of the suburbs. As always, I'm gonna let you just take a quick peek at what's growing and then I'll come back and I'll break it all down for you. So right now, sit back and enjoy the tour.
spend my rambling years I paid my sins from the poor traveling days Oh Lord, please, can you hear my prayers? So I rode my body up the mountain To a place where I can sit my rocking chair I rode my body up the mountain And I'm never going back again, I swear Most likely the son of mine will be found In the mountains where I'm born and raised I paid my duty, it's the sunny side cutie Oh Lord, hear the sorrow in my heart So I rode my body up the mountain To a place where I can sit my rocking chair Sit in my rocking chair. I rode my buddy up the mountain, and I'm never going back again. I swear. So let's get this tour started. You will see that I have pots and raised beds and some in ground, anything that I could use to make this a pretty and functional space I have used. Most of it has been done with just scraps that I have found around the house um, that my husband's discarded from other projects that he's done. I've made an occasional trip to my local Lowe's to pick up a few things, but most of it has just been done on a very, very strict budget. We are actually here April 2021 in transition from cool season to warm season. So you will see most of the cool season has passed its prime and most of the warm season, such as the tomatoes and the peppers and the squash and all of that, is just, just getting started. Here's the last of the sugar snap peas. I actually put them in late. I'm learning so much. Next year I will start these here in zone 10, probably in November, and then I will get a good few months out of them. You'll notice I have tomatoes tucked into anywhere that I could find space. I try to put a few herbs in there, that's chamomile, and a little leftover kale. Also fruit trees. Any large pot that I could find, I put a fruit tree in. This is a lime. This is the 
first year for it um, that that lime was on the tree when I bought it but I do see several small ones that is a borage that I tucked in there for pollination this is my potting bench uh, my husband built this for me actually a couple of years ago but I didn't use it because it was so warm back here um, but now that I'm back here more often my husband got me a beautiful umbrella to keep the plants cool and to keep me cool so I have added some pretty flowers and just um, leftover knickknacks that I had around the house I skirted it with a painter's cloth to hide all the utility stuff that I use quite often and then I just stored all of my practical kneading um, stakes and wire fencing and all of that in a bucket here. This raised bed I built from scratch which is normal for me just whatever I find laying around but in here I have a sweet bell pepper I have some radishes that are just about done I need to pull this week there's some marigolds and three tomato plants. I also tucked in some calendula and some borage that will bring in the pollinators as it gets warmer. You can see I have a few set, um, a few set fruit on each plant. These were actually starts from Lowe's, I believe. So in here I have an early girl, which is an indeterminate, which means that it will just keep growing. And then I have this celebrity, and it is actually a determinate, which means it will be more compact. It's not going to get. Um, way up to the top of this trellis so I tucked it in the middle of the two that do climb you'll see on the end here my last tomato is actually a Roma and um, it will grow tall so I've supported it with one of those uh, wire cages that you will get at a big box store and instead of making it um, triangular I just spread it out and tucked it in with some posts this calendula has been in here since last year and you can see it really is ready to be pulled I'm kind of waiting for some of the new plants to start flowering and then I will just pull all of the old ones this is actually a whole beefsteak that I've tucked into that grow bag These are raspberries. This, this one has actually been in for a year now. I have four new bushes, raspberries and blackberries, plus four blueberry plants in this um, berry row that I have here along the wall. The blueberries were struggling. Um, we do not have acidic soil and they like acidic soil, so I've just amended it this sad thing is a potato plant that is ready to be harvested. I'm waiting for my grandson because it's always fun digging for potatoes. Here's another trellis of sugar snap peas and you can see they've got quite a bit of powdery mildew. They are ready to come out. Um, there's still a few flowers and the beans that I have planted at the base that are going to climb up this area are not quite um, to the point where they need support yet so I'm just letting those sweet peas hang on these are the beans I was talking about and you can see I put a little collar around them to help try to keep the bugs and the birds from getting at them until they can get established again um, I had them laying around I have so many of them um, it's a good way to reuse and repurpose and I can use them again.
four potatoes. These are not um, quite ready. I'm hoping I get some flowers on them. I don't always, but they are growing in grow bags. I think the 15 gallon grow bags. These are blueberries along the back here. And this here is a raspberry, I believe. That is my zucchini plant. I have some more starts um, ready to go, but I am waiting for space. That's one thing about having a small vegetable garden. That's more potatoes. Um, when you have a small vegetable garden, you really have to uh, time things properly. This is lettuce. I can see a lot of it's going to seed. Um, I'm going to try to grow some sprouts of some kind, some kind of greens in the shade through the summer. I'll let you know how that goes. I have a couple of bush beans in this pot here. If they start to look a little crowded, I may have to thin that out. This is a tom tomatillo pepper. I have never grown them before, but aren't those flowers beautiful? This little raised bed has a mixture of flowers and um, vegetables. This is larkspur and by next month it will be just beautiful. Always a trying to attract the pollinators. This is a late going broccoli. I just put it in on a whim and I do see a little head forming in there. This area gets quite a bit of shade in the afternoon so I'm hoping I'll get um, a little bit of broccoli from that. That is a chamomile. I have chives growing in this pot. There's lemon balm and mint. This sorry looking pot is the onions that the chickens scratched up. And here in this small whiskey barrel, I have radishes that are going to seed that will be pulled. I also have a couple of cucumber plants tucked in there. trays I have sunflowers and zinnias I'm hoping to get them into the garden either this week or next week we have a little heat wave coming and I don't want to shock them that much that is a bean plant and some peppers Got more zinnia seeds that I just started. Zucchini, pickling cucumbers, and then I have some vining black eyed Susan, uh, which will replace my sweet peas. violas everywhere. This is my peach tree and it's actually in a full-size whiskey barrel or half whiskey barrel I guess and I do see some fruit on it so hopeful this is its second year. 
This is a little uh, pot that I'm going to try to do some microgreens in and see if I can't keep some kind of lettuce going all year round. And volunteer tomatoes end up in their own little pots. That is a scented geranium and catmint and rosemary. Borage just getting ready to come into flower and of course another tomato and more nasturtium. This calendula I planted from seed and it's larger than I thought it was going to be. You can still see I have some lettuce um, tucked in that looks still edible. I have cucumbers along the back here and as they get bigger I will clear some of this stuff out to give them more airflow. And I also have a couple of tomatoes along the front. That is my one pumpkin vine. I never have luck with pumpkins, but I try every year. That one looks pretty hopeful. And this is popcorn. I've never grown corn, obviously. Corn takes a lot of, a lot of space to grow, but I thought it would be fun for the grandkids to grow some popcorn. So that's most of the vegetable garden. This is the rabbit run. Um, the rabbits are out here most of the day, um, unless the weather is increment, or if I'm gonna be gone, I don't bring them out. Uh, at night, they are in a hutch up on the patio, and I have a video on that I will share with you in the description box. can see that both the rabbit hutch and the chicken coop um, are protected by a pretty good layer of trees so I'm not too worried with overhead predators I do have extra shading up for the rabbits so this is the umbrella that my husband got me for my birthday and I I'm so thrilled and so pleased with how comfortable and how pretty it looks back here now. This is a second year avocado tree. I don't expect avocados on it this year, but I do see a lot of flowers. So next year we should have a good, a good crop. So that is a tour of our backyard homestead. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you were inspired. It doesn't take a lot of room to grow food for your family. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them for you. Once again, thank you for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video.